In this tutorial in Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, we're going to show you some tips on adding narration into a movie project. I have a project here of a canyon, and I start out with a freeze frame section. We have a tutorial on how to do that. And then when we get to this place here, we, we run into our actual movie where we can see the canyon moving and then we have several different places where we have titles that pop up above that. We're going to show you some places where in the United States uh, you generally cannot fly a drone, no matter how amazing the scenery might be. And so let me show you an example of the finished product and then give you some tips on how to get there. When you see amazing footage like this, you may be tempted to buy a drone so you can take these kinds of pictures. Unfortunately, we often forget in the United States, there are many places where we cannot fly a drone. Let me give you some examples. You can't fly your drone over people unless they're completely covered. You can't fly your drone over private property unless you have permission of the property owner. You also can't fly your drone over any national park in the United States. Nor can you fly your drone higher than 400 feet, except in certain circumstances. And you can't fly your drone in one of many controlled airspaces in the US. In order to produce what you just saw, we're going to first of all take our playhead and move it to the very beginning of the project. One of the things that I strongly recommend you do, especially if your narration is not all that long, is practice it. And the easiest way to do it is not to turn on your narration settings, but simply move your playhead to the beginning of the project and press the play key as you practice what you're going to say or read while this is on the screen. I had to do this three or four times to get close to the result that you just saw, but it gives you a very good way of beginning to do this without erasing your attempts over and over and over again. And while it's true that you can cut them to some degree, you need a cadence or a pacing, uh, something that will work in general, and you can edit the goofs out, the mistakes as you go. But you don't want to have to edit every five seconds in a project like this. So we'll pretend that we have practiced this several times. The next thing we need to do is turn on our narration. The way we do that is we click on the Tools menu at the top and then click on Narration. Now that will give you this pop-up screen here, which uh, gives you the options of how to, how to do your narration. One of the options, if I'm going to move this over here, is I have a little microphone. If I click on the microphone, it gives me my source. Now one problem I had when I started was that my source was not the microphone I wanted to use. I have several potential microphones in my system and it didn't give me the one I wanted. I can't change it here. If that's the case for you, what can you do? Well, let me show you. We simply click on the edit menu at the top and choose preferences. And under preferences, unfortunately, off the recording screen, the third one down is audio hardware. And when I click on that, it will give me my default input. And if I click on my down arrow, you see I have three options. I have a USB audio device, I have the blue snowball I'm using here, and I have a microphone on my webcam. So this is where you change it if the default is not the one you want. And you just click on the other option and click on OK. Since I like the snowball, I'll click on Cancel. But that's how you change this particular option. You can also move or resize this screen if it happens to get in the way of what you want to do. So here's what I'm going to do now. Now that I know I have the microphone I want, I can adjust uh, the sensitivity on the mic. And then the next step, if I'm all ready to go, making sure my playhead is to the left, is I'll click on the record button. And when you do, you'll have a three second countdown appear above the record button. So we'll click the record button, and now it tells me when to start. And now it's starting the recording. And I can record what I've written or what comes to mind, uh, what 
what I want to be on my narration track here in this particular video. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right now. And when I do, I have a couple of things that happen. First of all, I see that this is in my project assets. It simply says voice and then will be an underscore and then you'll have a number related to the project. Now, if I decide I don't like what I did at all, I want to do it over again, you can click on the delete button. And if we look down here on our voice track, we have our narration. Now watch what happens when I click on the trash can. It removes it from my project, but it does not remove it from my assets. So what I've trained myself to do is I'll right click on it and I'll click cut because I don't want that in my project assets. I'm not going to use it and I'm back to where I started. I'll go ahead and click on tools and narration again. Another thing I'd like to show you is that when you do the recording, you have uh, also the option of playing this again. So let's do a record again. We'll make sure our playhead is at the beginning of our project. And we'll just go ahead and click on record. We'll wait our three seconds. And we've got another small segment here. And now we'll go stop. And now you notice it's an, another number higher. Here is our recording. And then if I hit play, it doesn't play from the beginning of the recording. It plays from the beginning of wherever your current time indicator is. So you need to know that's exactly what it's doing there. So we'll go ahead and pause it. But if I go back to the beginning, and now I hit play. If I weren't recording, this, you would hear what I have in my voice track. I'll click on Done now. And when you're all finished, if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and render your project. But this is a simple way to go ahead and begin to make your voice tracks work. Now, if I click the down arrow, I'll actually see the waveform and I can go ahead and make some more edits if I want to uh, using some of the techniques that we show you in other tutorials in Premiere Elements 2018.